Today marks one month since the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School. And many students from our region spent 17 minutes outside of their schools today. One minute for each life lost at the Florida High School. And they demanded action on gun laws. Earlier today, I followed up with three students from this area who we originally spoke with in the wake of the shooting. I think our main goal was showing each other that we've had enough and that we're all going to work on this together. It's not just an idea. We are ready to take action, and this was the first step of many. And so now you're wearing black today, as each of you explained to me in mourning for the 17 lives that were lost a month ago today. What are you wearing the orange armbands for? Uh, so we're wearing the or orange armbands, um, partly just because orange is the color of um, Stoneman Douglas, uh, but partly because when we were originally making these events, and we um, at least, at the, actually no, in the region, we were having these huge communal meetings with, you know, like 35, 40 people. And one of the ideas that they got thrown out was just someone was in AP U.S. history, and, and people were thinking about Tinker v. Des Moines. And Which is the... The legislation when yeah when kids were looking at wearing armbands during the Vietnam War. During the Vietnam moment, and so uh, I think there is a lot of spirit of you know people kind of think of kids as coming out of this movement as coming out of like an abyss and of nothing, um, but from our perspective, our grandparents uh, fought might have fought in World War II. Our parents might have been in the civil rights and the Vietnam movement, and we grew up with the Occupy Wall Street and the Black Lives Matter movement. So we were just thinking about how can we how can we show that we're standing on the shoulders of giants? How can we tap into that energy to continue and carry the torch in whatever direction we can possibly think of. And as Ben just points out, there is a lot of passion, there is a lot of energy around this, but it's also tied to a very sobering and somber day. And I think you girls spoke a lot about that, right? Hallie, how did you work to balance, you know, the fact that something sad happened, you're looking at that, but you also want to encourage action around this? Well, like you said, we are trying to respect what happened and we are trying to move on. So we started with some chants at the um, walkout and then we went into a moment of silence. And so you also, you could choose, you, you spoke as students about the possibility of being silent for the rest of the day and did you do that today? Yes, yeah. Hallie and I were both silent from after the walkout until 2.30 when school got out today. And so what was that like for you? Different from how you usually spend your day? Definitely. I mean, I think being in middle school and high school, everything is based on communication and sort of taking that aspect away. Every time we would do something differently, every time we would have to change the way we were doing something because we couldn't, we, because we chose not to talk, we were reminded of everything we were doing. Hmm. And other people were too when they saw us in silence and saw our stickers <laughs> saying why. And Ben, for you at the high school, what was a, a point that was important for you to make this morning as you took part in this walkout? Well, you know, the point that I and I end up making, and um, uh, and and this was just the part of the the part of the demonstration I end up leading, um, was one of the coolest things I thought we did was that we read sentences about um, about each of the victims. We didn't just read their name and um, and their age. We read we read, read something human humanizing about them. Because right now we're just hearing names and faces mostly. We're hearing numbers, and and it, and it's meaningless, and it's kind of. Um, it doesn't appeal to our greater sense of humanity. And so I think that there was a really cool moment was when, um, was when, was when while we were reading these sentences about kids who, you know, um, who, you know, were basketball players, who were um, academic scholars, who really liked eating chicken nuggets was one kid. People who were just overall, as all humans are, they're a human. And so I think there was a moment when, when, when people in the audience really, really realized that and really felt that, and then suddenly the entire energy transformed, and suddenly we had hit something uh, inside of people uh, where we appealed to compassion. Yeah. So as you know, you know, these protests took place in Northampton, but they happened across our region today and across the country. And I've heard from a few people who say, you know, this isn't students' place. Students should be in school <laughs> studying. <laughs> who wants to speak to that first? Um, I'll, I'll speak to that. I think it is completely our place because it affects us. It affects our daily lives. It affects how we spend five days of the week. So it, and nobody has fixed this for us. There have been movements that have tried to fix this, but we're, nothing has really changed as it should. And we have taken it upon ourselves to work with that and do it for ourselves. As I talked about, you know, and as many people are well aware, it's been a month, and you all have spent a lot of time learning in this past month. Is there one thing that you've learned, Hallie, that really stands out for you 
uh, you know, as you've done your research? Um, I guess that change won't just happen on its own. Someone has to start it, no matter if it's students, teachers, adults, anybody. And so when you went back into school today, you two were silent, but Ben, what, were, what, were, what was the reaction, the response that students and teachers had to the fact that the majority of, what, you had almost 900 kids outside today? We probably had around, like, yeah, sure, we might have had around 700, 800. Our school only has, like, 850. Mm -hmm. um, but the question um, was what was, how did it change? I think that, I think there was really a sense of unity um, and, 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 and a greater sense of, uh, of, of gratitude. In the community right after. So as we were as we were reading the sentence during the demonstration, I noticed as I was looking out. I mean, kids were hugging. Um, kids were closer. People people seem to people seem to have gotten a reality check, a look in the mirror at where we are as a country and the risks that it just that that you that you take on every day when you go to school. And so for each of you now moving forward. I know that you're each taking part in the March for Our Lives, which is later this month, March 24th. Is that the next step for each of you? You're planning for that? You're thinking about that? Where, where do you go from here? I think that is our next step. That is now. That is what our time will be devoted to. I think leading up to it, we just want to sort of, we have this momentum. And I think we want to keep it going. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges is it's not just one event. We want, the, we want this to be a conversation and an action that keeps going. So having these somewhat close together is, I think, going to really help that. Mm -hmm. And so where do you go now? Yeah, so where do we go now? That's a conversation we've been having pretty much every day. And, and the conclusion that we're at right now, and it's really important that our community knows this, is that um, through this process of these, of these walkouts and, and, and these marches all around the valley, right, um, all these kids have gotten in contact. So I've been in touch with probably like kids from 20 different schools in the area. And we've been all having group that calls. Have, you've never met before. I have this. never met before in my entire life. Um, <laughs> kids from Pittsfield, Belchertown, wherever. But um, the point is, moving forward, what we want to do is we want to form a coalition. And, um, and we want this coalition to keep doing the work um, that, that we've been doing for the March for Our Lives. And the coalition name is the Pioneer Valley March, um, the Pioneer Valley Students for Gun Control. And it's not, a, it's not that we're trying to be a fancy like nonprofit or anything. We, we're not going to have a formal, but we are going to be, keep fighting. We are going to keep protesting. The world doesn't change when, when students are quiet. Students have like, you know, been on the forefront of like every major movement. So if you're going to teach us about the Vietnam movement in school, and if you're going to teach us about the civil rights movement in school, then you can't expect us not to understand the vast amount of power and responsibility we have.